I will gladly take this time to introduce today's presenters. I am proud to introduce co-founder and CTO at Stratus 10, Kevin Rasanchu. Stratus 10 is an Amazon Web Services advanced tier partner that helps companies migrate to the cloud or implement best practices if they're already on AWS. From AWS, we have Kavita Mahajan presenting Amazon Connect. At this time, I'm going to let Kevin take over and run over a quick agenda. Our first presentation will be AWS Connect, followed by an LA County use case from Amazon Web Services. At 10 o'clock, we will be presenting AWS Workspaces, followed by a University of Virginia use case. We have reserved time at the end of the presentation for questions and answers. And as a reminder, please use the webinar control chat panel to submit as they come up throughout the event. Thank you again, and I'll let Kevin take over now. Actually, this is gonna be Kavita's presentation first. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Lexi. Let me know if you can see my screen. All right, thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, my name is Kavita Mahajan and I'm a senior solutions architect at AWS. Uh, today, I would like, like to uh, walk you through Amazon Connect. The agenda for today is uh, that we'll go over uh, Amazon's, uh, we'll start with Amazon's customer service journey. Then we'll move on to learn about um, Amazon Connect, its functionality, uh, the key differentiators such as unified chat and voice experience, uh, contact lens, uh, which is a real-time analytics engine powered by machine learning. We'll wrap it up with a demonstration of Amazon Connect and we'll review pricing and availability. A lot of uh, our customers know that at Amazon, we strive to be Earth's most customer-centric company. Today, we have over 70,000 uh, customer service associates uh, serving millions of customers who speak dozens of languages uh, and are spread across 32 countries. We've seen uh, this growth over time, uh, over the years. Uh, around 12 years back, uh, when Amazon retail business saw an exceptional growth, uh, we knew that in order to support our scale and to deliver the customer service that we strive for, uh, we would need the right technology. The technology that we were looking for uh, needed to be scalable to meet uh, the trajectory of growth that we were uh, expecting. And it also uh, needed to support our occasional peaks during holiday season or even such as Prime Day. The technology needed also needed to be simple uh, so that any contact center uh, around the world could make uh, easily make changes. Uh, it needed to be open so that we could integrate it with our existing, uh, existing data sources. And uh, finally, it needed to be reliable. So we began evaluating uh, various uh, marketplace options, solutions we had for, for a contact center and uh, the products in the marketplace could not meet our expectation. Uh, some, some of the challenges that we encountered were uh, most of these tools were cumbersome. Uh, they, they required complex setups. They had different integrations uh, requiring bespoke uh, coding environments that further required uh, engagement of heavy uh, professional services not only for initial deployment, but also for uh, maintaining the product over time and making changes to it. We also uh, realized that we needed to install uh, the telephony infrastructure, hardware and software in our data center uh, centers to, uh, to, to, to have this product. 
Uh, we were not very sure about uh, the scalability, uh, security and reliability of these solutions. Um, and last of all, the pricing did not fit uh, our model of delivering the customer value. Uh, pricing was complex uh, and it required, um, in most cases, proper agency licenses and long-term uh, long-term commitments to the product. It was difficult to manage that pricing at our scale. So we, we built uh, our own contact center and it's called Amazon Connect. Amazon Connect uh, is an easy to use cloud-based contact center that scales uh, to support businesses of any size. It comes with all the standard function functionality that you would expect from a call center, such as uh, skills-based uh, contact routing which means uh, your, your customers will, can be routed to the right representatives that can best serve their needs uh, based on the information that you already know about the call. Uh, call recordings and chat transcripts are natively provided to you in Amazon Connect. No additional licensing or integrations are needed. Your call recordings and chat transcripts are made available uh, in your S3 buckets, giving you full access to your data so that you can, uh, you can integrate it or ingest it uh, in your existing analytical and BI tools. Real-time and historical analytics are built right into the product. Uh, it includes custom reports custom tabular reports that you can create, and also uh, a performance monitor with visual dashboards that allows you to monitor your system in real time. Call recordings are built into your report so that you have the capability to go back and listen into your calls right there from your reporting. And finally, uh, Connect uh, uses a high quality codec to ensure that your customers and agents get the best experience. Uh, it delivers this high quality uh, voice capability over a soft phone that we call a contact control panel. Uh, your agents do not need um, a, a hard phone line to support the, the customers. Alongside, uh, these, um, alongside these basic features, Amazon Connect also has some differentiating, uh, differentiating features. For starters, it is 100% cloud-based. You do not need any software downloads, no plugins, no hardware. Uh, every part of Amazon Connect is available purely in a browser, and all you need is a broadband internet connection. Amazon Connect can be set up in minutes, um, and agents can uh, take calls just after a few simple steps. Another differentiating factor of uh, Amazon Connect is that you can create dynamic personal and natural contact flows uh, that, um, that allow you to give, uh, that are very similar to um, interactive voice uh, response that you see with the traditional um, telephony contact centers, but uh, th these contact flows do a little more. Uh, you can design conversational interactions that feel natural to your customer uh, by integrating with uh, our other services such as Amazon Lex, which also powers Alexa uh, using the natural language processing capabilities. We'll see a demo in a few minutes that, uh, that, that demonstrates this. Amazon Connect is an open platform that is simple to integrate with other enterprise applications. Uh, by integrating with your customer data, you can anticipate end user uh, end customer needs, predicting and delivering answers to questions before they even asked. And finally, the real uh, secret sauce that we believe, uh, however, is the ability to leverage the ecosystem of AWS services uh, over 180 and over 185 uh, partner integrations that have been built on top of AWS Connect, uh, Amazon Connect. This allows you to quickly innovate on experiences that you create for your customers. And uh, we'll see in a moment how, how we, you can you leverage the power of um, our serverless compute Lambda and um, Lex, which is, uh, which is the natural language, in, uh, language processing uh, engine that powers Alexa. Hi, 
Hi, Navy Wolf. I apologize that your flight was canceled. I can rebook you for the next available flight, departing at 10 p.m. Would you like to book that now? No, I'd rather rebook for the same time tomorrow. Is that possible? Yes, that flight is available departing at 9 a.m. out of San Francisco, arriving in Seattle at 11.45 a.m. I can book you in seat 12C. It's an aisle. Would you like me to do that? Yes, thank you. So let us talk about the experience that the caller Nikki had. Uh, we can say it was personalized. We greeted her, uh, we, we greeted Nikki with her name. The experience was also dynamic as we were able to understand that her flight was canceled uh, even before uh, we greeted her. And that allowed us to dynamically present an appropriate greeting for what Nikki is most likely to be calling about. Um, we can also say that her experience was very natural. It felt natural to her because she could use her own natural English language. No more uh, press one for sales, press two for support. Uh, Nikki could talk in, in her own native language and was understood by the bot. Uh, the, the, uh, the contact flow engine was also smart enough to understand that it needed to ask Nikki certain questions to be able to dynamically understand that it needed to ask Nikki certain questions to be able to assist her. Uh, her. So let's look at what powered this kind of an experience. Uh, when the call came in, the Amazon, uh, uh, Amazon contact, uh, Connect got the caller ID that it further passed to the serverless compute AWS Lambda. Lambda was able to do a data dip in our CRM repository to find the uh, find Nikki's name uh, based on the contact uh, a caller ID that she uh, that it got, and it also got uh, the account ID for Nikki. Uh, this account ID was further used by another Lambda to do uh, a search in the flight booking system. This, uh, the Lambda was able to find that Nikki had booked a flight that got canceled. And based upon this information, uh, Amazon Lex was able to create a personalized greeting for Nikki. Amazon Lex was also able to understand Nikki's um, natural language and respond to it uh, as if it were a human. So in a lot of cases, uh, we would like to automate our customer service experience like we saw here. Uh, it's very powerful. Amazon Connect has very powerful tools uh, for us to create uh, natural, personalized, and dynamic flows. But th there are times when, uh, when, when you need to engage an agent, when an automated system cannot fully uh, solve the problem. So let's look at such an, such an example. I can book you in C12C. It's an aisle. Would you like me to do that? Can I get a first class upgrade for my inconvenience? One moment while I connect you with a customer service associate. Hi, Nikki. My name is Alan. I'm sorry for your inconvenience. I'm checking to see what we can do to make your flight to Seattle tomorrow more comfortable. So, in typically, typically in experiences like this, uh, when you call a contact center and you give information to the automated system and you are routed to an agent, typically uh, customers have to repeat uh, what, what they have told to the automated system, uh, which, which can be frustrating and an inefficient experience for, for the customer. In this case, uh, what is different is that Alan, before even um, getting on the call, got a full transcript of the communication that Nikki had with uh, the automated bot. And that made the overall experience pleasant, uh, efficient uh, for, for, and, uh, for, for the customer. We were able to do this uh, using the power of um, Amazon Chat. Amazon Chat is built right into Amazon Connect. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's not unusual for businesses to have both uh, phone as well as chat features for, uh, for supporting their end customers. Uh, but in the process, they use disparate uh, technologies to implement both these functionalities. Uh, and that results in a disjointed experience for, for the customer. They get a different experience when they call in and a different experience when they use the uh, chat feature. 
it also is uh, very difficult for the administrators or um, supervisors to manage because there's a significant operational overhead of maintaining two different channels. Not to, not to mention that the customer uh, experience creators have to uh, build two sets of, uh, you know, two, two, two sets of experiences for both these channels. Uh, Amazon Connect is a truly omni-channel uh, and, the, and the only uh, omni-channel uh, contact center that allows the same experience for your user, uh, for your customers calling either via phone channel or chat channel. So you build one contact flow and you're able to deploy it with both chat as well as phone. You can also, uh, you can also integrate your uh, metrics and reporting use the same cues, uh, use the same leg spots as we'll see in a moment when we do the demonstration. Um, and uh, the experience is, uh, uh, you give the same personal dynamic and natural experience to your customer, even via the chat. So as we saw with chat, you can build once and enable everywhere. You can build uh, the contact flow and enable it with both phone and chat channels. You can also allow for asynchronous uh, service to your customers using Amazon Connect Chat because your customers can uh, start their conversation during their office hours and maybe resume that after, you know, after hours. Uh, the agent would have full transcripts um, you know, in their uh, control panel uh, to, to be able to resume using the chat channel. Amazon Connect is um, end to end, it, it, it's very, security is built into Amazon chat, uh, allowing you to encrypt your uh, messages end to end using customer's encryption key. This allows for innovative, innovative use cases, uh, such as authenticated secure chat uh, within mobile banking applications or healthcare uh, industry or any industry that needs to keep the data secure. Uh, using Lex, uh, simple chatbots can be enabled in minutes uh, using a graphical uh, designer with no coding required, and we'll again we'll we'll do that demonstration um, in the later half this half of this presentation. Uh, Amazon Connect Chat continues to deliver um, the complete contact center experience at a fraction of cost uh, of traditional contact center solutions, and you pay only for uh, the messages that you exchange and you don't have any licensing or commitment with Amazon Connect Chat. So, so far we've seen the experience that customer gets. Uh, we, we saw that customer gets a very dynamic, personalized and natural experience with uh, you know, Amazon contact, con contact flows. Let's look at the experience that, um, that the agent gets. So on the right side of the control panel, you see a web app that gives agent controls for handling calls and managing their status. It supports all basic capabilities uh, agents need to run uh, entirely in the browser as a soft phone. No disk, desk phone is needed to support your customers. And from a single interface, agents are able to handle interactions with customers on both voice and chat. Many contact centers uh, use, uh, use CRMs, uh, customer relationship management uh, tools, and uh, they also use um, they also use work for manage, workforce management tools uh, and other, they may have other enterprise data sources where uh, they, they, that they may like to integrate with your with their um, contact center so that they can have dynamic responses, automated responses built. Amazon uh, Connect uh, allows you to do that by integrating with, integrating your uh, existing, uh, existing CRM and workflow management tools uh, using a variety of built-in connectors and integrations that uh, our, our partners have built, already built with Amazon Connect. So as I mentioned, over 185 partner integrations are available already for, uh, for you to integrate with your existing tools. If you use any commercial tool, most likely it already has an integration built in with Connect. Uh, 
your data is your data and uh, we we save it for uh, you like i said we save your call recordings and chat graph scripts in your uh, s3 buckets so that you can do you can build further analytics on it and you can ingest them into your uh, other databases or data sources uh, as, as needed One of the key uh, tenants for companies um, is, is to get a complete picture of the satisfaction of customers and how they can interact uh, with your business, how they interact with your business. Contact Lens for Amazon Connect is a set of machine learning capabilities. It is directly integrated into Amazon Connect. Um, contact Lens uh, allows supervisors um, and managers to better understand the sentiment the trends and the compliance risks of customer interaction. Uh, this helps them uh, efficiently uh, train the agent, replicate success, uh, and uh, identify crucial company and, and product feedback that they get from the customers. Uh, some of the built-in features of Amazon Connect are uh, search features. So let's look at how, how the advanced search looks. As you can see uh, on the screen, this is a this is the search screen that that you see in Amazon Lens. It uh, allows you to do a search based on keywords and phrases that uh, that are in the call and chat transcripts. You can filter by speaker type, uh, either customer or agent. Uh, you will also be able to look at specific characteristics of your interactions. For example, how long was customer kept on hold? or how, how fast was customer or agent talking. You can even look for uh, where customer uh, agent interrupted the customer. You can be able to not only search based on sentiment of, uh, you know, of the speakers, uh, but you would also be able to uh, you know, find if uh, a customer joined the call with a better sentiment than they, than they ended the call. This would give you, uh, you know, insight into whether you need to dive deep um, into this particular call and see the reason for that and understand why that happened. So uh, with all this powerful analytics, you also have, um, um, you know, you can, you can review the entire call transcript. You can listen to the most uh, relevant portion of the call. Um, you, can, you can see that, um, you know, the t uh, customer and agent sentiment for every speaker turn using this uh, user interface that you get uh, for detailed analytics and sentiment analysis. So as we, you know, as we talked about it earlier, many customers see AWS cloud services platform as uh, another differentiator, uh, as they can easily access these services, the ecosystem of AWS services that they have access to, to build their solutions. If you want to trigger an action to send a text message uh, in your contact flow, you can easily do that by integrating with either Amazon Pinpoint or Amazon Simple Notification Service. Um, you, you can build a rich analytics by using our um, analytics services uh, that, that work with either S3 buckets or um, you know, any, any other an analytical uh, engine that you use within AWS, such as Redshift, DynamoDB, or RDS. You can, um, you can also build integrations using AWS Lambda and our partner integrations that are already available. So you can see there are a lot of different services uh, in, in the ecosystem of AWS that can allow you to build rich interactions for your customers. Amazon Connect delivers a complete contact center um, at a fraction of cost of um, a traditional contact center solution. Like all AWS services, uh, pricing for Amazon Connect is pay as you go, and there are no required long-term commitments no activation fees, uh, no minimum spends. Uh, you can uh, instantly scale up or down to meet your needs without worrying about telephony, hardware, space, or capacity. Our customers have reported uh, savings of up to from 30 to 50% uh, just on just uh, what they pay for the maintenance of their existing traditional legacy systems. 
And sometimes these savings have uh, even gone up to 80%. Um, so we, we saw, we, we talked a lot about Connect. It's time for a demonstration. So let's move on to a AWS Console. So in the demonstration today, uh, we will be creating a help, IT help desk scenario. We'll be using our uh, Lex bots, which will provide a natural experience to the caller. Uh, we'll be creating two queues, one for password reset and another one for network issues. For the purpose of this lab, I've already created um, an Amazon Connect instance. You can see, uh, I just had to fill in five different tabs, enter very basic information, such as uh, a name for Amazon Connect. I, I gave uh, my preference for inbound and outbound calling. Any uh, S3 buckets of my choice where I would like tr chat transcripts and call recordings to be uh, saved. And that's, that's about it. I, I was able to create a, a Connect instance within, uh, um, within Two minutes or so. So let's start with creating our Lex bots that will allow for natural uh, inter language interaction between our uh, customers and our contact flow. Let's name our bot help desk. We'll use English language. And we can choose any voice here. Hello, my name is Matthew. We would have uh, an option to override this voice later in our, when we design our contact flows. So we create intents in uh, Amazon Lex. Intent would allow us to enter some phrases that we expect customer uh, would, would say. Based upon the phrases that we enter, Lex will use machine learning on natural language processing capabilities to find similar intent in another phrase that we don't mention here. So it'll allow uh, Lex to understand the intent uh, for this conversation. So I entered three phrases. I'm having issues with my password. I need to reset my password. I have lost my password. Let's, let's build this bot and see, do a quick test of uh, if it's able to understand the intent if I use a different phrase to say the same thing. So when I say I've lost my password, which is uh, what I had here, it says intent password reset is ready for fulfillment. That means it, uh, it understood the intent. I am able to again.
So um, I, when I said I'm unable to log in, it did not understand. So maybe we can add another uh, another phrase here. So we can add various phrases for uh, our bot to understand the intent and then uh, create a phrase that will uh, that will allow us to uh, understand the natural language. Kavita, sorry, we can't see what you're looking at. We still see the uh, the background. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I was I thought I was sharing my screen. Let me uh, let me share that. Thank you, Kevin, for bringing that up. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Can you see both the tabs or just one tab? We can see both. You, you can see both, right? Sorry, I I, I will. Um, I was not aware. I, I did not share my uh, my screen. Uh, so let me recap what I I did so far. Um, like I said, I I'm in my AWS console. I had created an Amazon Connect instance. Uh, where, uh, like I said, I answered a few questions. I, I gave uh, my instance a name, Stratiston uh, webinar demo. I gave some preferences for incoming and outbound, outbound calling. Um, I, I kept the defaults for the S3 buckets and that's about it. I, I, and I gave my contact information uh, so that it can create me as an admin user in the Connect instance. That's, that's what I did to create this uh, instance. It took me under two minutes. Uh, then I came to uh, the Lex service. Let me restart that. And I created a new bot uh, called Help Desk. The settings for this bot are pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, pretty straightforward. I just chose a voice and I was able to create the bot. Then I added some intents. These intents would tell uh, the bot what customer is complaining about or what customer wants to say. And the bot will be able to use natural language processing capabilities to uh, interpret that language. So I created the password reset bot by entering these four, uh, four or five um, phrases. I, I'm going to build my bot and I'm going to show you how you can test it right here in the console. Let's say I find my password. So you see, I had not given this phrase here. I, I had uh, given different phrases, but I did not write, I cannot find my password. And Lexbot was able to interpret that it's the same intent and it started the intent uh, password reset. Let's create uh, another intent here. Let's call it uh, network issues. And let's add some Let's build um, this bot. As you can see, you have a, a, a capability to test your bots right away. This allows you to test your bots before you start using them.
All right. So um, my internet is down. So when I say my internet is down, which is not here, I had written my network is down, my internet is not working, I go, cannot go on internet. It uh, still understood the intent and it started the network issues intent. If I say um, I cannot log in, it will start the password reset. So as we see the chat, the bot is working, we'll uh, build it, build the bot and publish it. We'll give it a name, uh, help desk. So while it publishes, I'm going to show you uh, what would be the next steps. We would, uh, we want to use this bot in our contact flows. So we'll come here and we'll select our help desk bot and uh, add this next bot. After that, let's go on to look at our connect instance, the contact center instance that we have created. So on the left hand side, you would see in the menu, there are several options uh, you know, that you can explore uh, here in your connect instance. So far, uh, all I've done is I have created a phone number. Uh, it takes around four to five minutes for phone number to be active before you can take uh, the first call. So I created it in advance, but, but uh, claiming a, a, you know, a soft phone is very straightforward. You come here, you can uh, select the country and it gives you an option to either select a toll free number or direct inward dialing number. You can pick any of the options that, that, that you have. Now, uh, we need two cues uh, for, uh, for the two, uh, two, two different intents that we have. So let's add a queue. We'll call it uh, password reset queue. And, uh, you know, we will use the basic hours. You can create your own hours, uh, each, uh, you know, where you can have a schedule of the set of agents to whom you want to assign those hours. But I'm going to go with the basic hours. So these are the two queues that are going to get, uh, you know, to which we will uh, route our message, uh, our calls for password reset and network issues. Now we'll update the routing profiles. Routing profile uh, is a way in which you can uh, you can route the call based on the skill of your agent. So you assign these routing profiles to your users or your agents, and depending upon the skill. Uh, you can create a, a queue for, let's say, English speaking uh, users, English speaking customers or English speaking custom, uh, agents who can take, uh, who can help customers with uh, password reset or network issues or any other, uh, you know, any other relevant queues that you have for your business. So in this case, we created two queues. We are going to allow our agent to be able to serve the customer using both voice and chat channel. And we'll also add a password reset and allow for both voice and chat channel. We'll save this. Now this was because I added to the basic uh, default queue. If you come to, under user management, you will see uh, I already have that basic uh, routing profile assigned to me. So I should be able to uh, uh, take the call if, if it were to, if it were to come. Now. Uh, Let's uh, look at how we can create a, a, a contact flow. Contact flow is the um, is the 
customer experience uh, that they get when they call in. So uh, if you look at it, it's, this is a graphical user interface enabled um, UI. You can, uh, from the left hand side, pick any, um, any control that you want to put in your flow and configure it. it there's no coding or uh, you know, special integration required. So uh, the first thing that I would like to do is I would like to uh, set logging. I would like to log my call so that I can troubleshoot it later. Um, I would also like to set uh, the voice I, 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 that, I, that I like. This will override the voice that I had chosen when I created my leg spot. So uh, let's pick the voice of my choice. Um, next, I would like to greet the customer. So I will play a prompt and you know, you, you can connect uh, one uh, one step in the flow to the next using uh, these output and input uh, signal signs here. I'm going to create uh, a text to speech, uh, you know, automation, and I'm going to say, "Welcome to the so after uh, after I've paid my prompt, I want to get customers' input on why they are calling." Right. So let's pick uh, the customer input control from here. I will uh, add text. Uh, again, this will be converted to speech. Uh, and I want the uh, response from the customer to be interpreted by, uh, interpreted by our uh, Amazon Lex board that we created. So I'm going to pick help desk. And then I need to add the intents that I, I want here. Uh, the two intents, if you remember, I had created here, network issues. Add another intent. And the second one was password reset. So I'm going to enter both of these and I'm going to save this. Uh, this prompt is going to um, after I after I get the response from the customer, I want to play prompts um, telling the customer that I'm going to route their call to the appropriate uh, agent who can support them. So for uh, th this will be customized uh, prompts uh, based upon the input that I got. So for network uh, issues, I would say, connect you to an agent to help you with your network issues. Save. Similarly here, I would like to say, let me connect you to an agent help you with your password reset. And if you know there's an error uh, for any uh, for, for any reason or, or the default behavior, I would say, okay, let me connect you. So based upon the intent that I uh, that I got from uh, from the customer, uh, I'm going to play the prompt. Sorry, seems like there's some error. I think I, I just,
Now, once I have picked the prompt, I'm going to uh, set my working queue for each of these scenarios. Uh, you can do a lot more. You can uh, do branching. You can do, uh, like I said, a data dip into your existing uh, data sources and create a dynamic flow. But for the purpose of this uh, demonstration, I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. I'm going to uh, just route it to the appropriate agent. I'm going to set it to the network issues queue. I'm going to set this one to my password reset queue. And for any default or error scenarios, I'm, I'm just going to route them to the basic queue. Uh, in the end, I need to transfer to the appropriate queue. So once I've set the queue, I'm going to uh, And then finally, I'm going to hang up. I'm going to disconnect and hang up after I transfer. So don't forget that. So uh, let's save this. Publish this. All right, I was able to publish it. Now, um, next thing would be uh, to assign it to the phone number that I have so that when people call, customers call on that phone number, they are, uh, they, they, this, they're routed to this con uh, contact flow. So I'm going to uh, call into this number now. Welcome to the help desk. How can I help you? I've lost my password. Let me connect you with an agent who can help you reset your password. So as we saw, uh, we were able to create a contact uh, contact flow. We were able to um, call into the number and we, that contact flow was triggered. Uh, let's see one last thing in this demo that is how the contact flow that you have created can also be enabled for the chat features, giving you a truly omni-channel um, omni experience. So this, uh, you know, in your, in your dashboard, you have a, an option to test your chat I'm going to test that. If you see uh, this uh, on the left-hand side, it's the customer's view. It's uh, it's the browser and your website where you would have the chat for the customer. Uh, we are interested on the right-hand side, which is the agent view. So I'll activate the control panel for the agent. Uh, in the test settings, I'm going to pick uh, the help desk chat. So as, as you know, you see it greeted us with welcome to help, help desk. How can I help you? I say, I cannot log in. Let me connect you uh, to an agent who can help you with your network issues. I think we need to uh, re restart the chat. So the idea is that you get the same unified experience um, when using the phone uh, as well as the um, as well as the chat.
We can test the network flow um, chat as well. I think I, I did the opposite <laughs> in, in my contact flows that uh, I, I believe. So that's a, that's an error I made probably when saving it. But uh, the, the, the idea is that you use the same contact flow and you, uh, you, you're able to route your calls to. So uh, I, I'll troubleshoot this later, uh, but the, the demonstration I wanted to show you was that it's very easy to create a, 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 you know, a personalized and natural flow with your uh, with using Connect in minutes. I'm going to share back um, sh share my presentation now so that I can talk about the pricing and availability. I can. Sorry, I lost my screen because I, uh, I ended the screen share. So now let's, let's look at uh, the the pricing for Amazon Connect. Uh, you have you you get uh, under, in the free tier you get ninety minutes per month direct inward dial uh, dialing dial calling and 30 minutes of inbound calls and uh, 500 messages. Uh, you, uh, you the, the pricing is uh, 0 0.018 per minute. You can see it on the screen and 0 0.004 per message, per, per chat message usage. The the uh, the service is available in, in the stated uh, regions, which is US East uh, West, Asia, Asia Pacific, um, EU, and uh, Frankfurt in London. Like I, uh, I, you know, I mentioned the value of AWS Connect is that you get the pay as you go pricing. There are no uh, maintenance and uh, management overheads. Uh, you can uh, you you can create a contact center within minutes, and you do not need uh, any hard phone lines for your agents. They can work just with a browser and uh, a computer and an internet connection. Um, and finally, I just want to give you uh, an overview of what all uh, partner integrations we have. So there are various categories, uh, such as uh, customer relationship management tools, Salesforce, SAP, Zendesk. They all have built integrations with Amazon Connect. Uh, the slide gives you a, an introduction to all our partner, uh, you know, partner organizations that have built integrations with uh, Amazon Connect. And this will allow you to create dynamic customer uh, experience. And I'll wrap it up uh, by, you know, with, with one of my favorite quotes from one of our customers, uh, Rackspace. They say, if, if, if our legacy contact center was a railroad, Amazon Connect is like a rocket ship. So it helps go faster, um, further faster in serving our customers and living up to our promises. Uh, that's all uh, today, folks. If you have any questions, feel free to put in the chat and uh, I I'll take I. I'll take them. I hope this uh, presentation was useful to you. Thank you so much. Over to you, Lexi. Thank you, Kavita. At this point, we will let Kevin share his screen and jump into AWS Workspaces. Um, if you guys have any questions, it doesn't look like there's anything in the Q&A or chat panel. So I believe we can move forward. All right, thank you, Lexi. Hopefully everybody can see my screen. Says I am sharing and I'm audio is good. All right, so we're gonna, good morning, everybody. We're gonna talk about uh, Amazon Workspaces today. Uh, basically, this is your uh, VDI solution uh, provided by Amazon. Uh, 
just a quick marquee of um, customers that are currently using workspaces right now uh, span pretty much uh, quite a number of major verticals, healthcare, media, uh, manufacturing, insurance, uh, software providers. Um, you, uh, they run quite the gambit of, of providers here. All right, from, uh, for the beginning, um, AWS uh, has always built their services based on uh, customer feedback. Um, and with workspaces, they incorporated feedback from both the IT teams that normally would be deploying and managing these services, uh, but also from the workers uh, or end users who would be using these tools uh, every day in order to be productive. Um, and from their feedback, they, uh, they understood that uh, users want to be able to work from anywhere, anytime uh, to access the company's uh, applications and data uh, using their favorite devices. Uh, while IT uh, is always concerned around data security, uh, reducing the management complexity and increasing their user productivity. All right. Uh, quite a few uh, macro trends have been driving uh, the end user computing adoption, uh, including this current pandemic that we're all living through. Uh, the way people work have significantly changed over the last 15 years. And the globalization of the economy has driven the need to work uh, from anywhere and, and with anyone at any time. Uh, you no longer assume that all the work is done uh, in a traditional office. Uh, work can be done more and more in teams, uh, so there's a strong focus around communication and collaboration across those teams and across time zones. Uh, in addition, workers uh, seek a flexible work environment uh, where they can find better balance between their work life and their personal life. So basically what we've seen is about 65% of employees say that they're more productive when they have a flexible work policy. Uh, about 43% of workers have already started working remote. Uh, this is back from since 2018. So this number is just significantly increased. I think the latest statistics show uh, the 70% uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, and then roughly 16 million uh, workers are part of the gig economy, uh, temp workers, contract workers, freelancers, et cetera. Um, okay. And then at the same time, businesses are moving uh, equally as fast. The average uh, Fortune 500 uh, company is now only 20 years old, uh, whereas back in 1950, this was a 60 uh, year average. And then mergers and acquisitions are really driving this uh, activity, um, total five, five trillion globally uh, in 2018. Um, but let's talk about security. Security is still the most important uh, topic for IT administrators. How do you secure your, your company assets? Um, you know, back in the first half of 2018, there was four and a half billion records that were exposed as part of data breaches. 34% of those breaches were from lost or stolen devices or documents. Uh, the cost of an average breach was about 3.8 million. Um, and that was up about 6% from the previous year. Okay, so organizations are now turning to the cloud to solve these uh, solve these uh, security issues and, and performance issues. Um, and they're looking at cloud desktops as a viable alternative. All right, this modern approach uh, to work presents challenges for IT. They need to support many devices uh, and maintain legacy applications while also building the next generation of capacity and provide an easy experience for their employees all while ensuring corporate assets and data is secure and driving down the costs. Uh, the traditional approaches of supporting end users are falling short. Procuring, maintaining, uh, and maintaining desktops and laptops are expensive and utilize hardware, which often sits idle. 
So VDI is starting to show promise, but it doesn't scale. It's capital intensive and it's expensive to maintain and inevitably delivers a poor customer experience. Uh, while BYOD is convenient for the uh, end user, it introduces security and uh, support risks that are often not acceptable or are way too expensive for IT users or IT um, managers. Customers also report that, unfortunately, the traditional approaches to end user support uh, is falling short in this new world. What they found was that VDI showed promise, though building out a global VDI solution, including hardware and network designs, is quite a significantly hard problem. Uh, added to that, the cost of on-premise infrastructure, um, where many customers have said that they've tried the traditional VDI and other on-premise infrastructure solutions, but they said they focused on trying to guess what their annual demand and buying hardware for the peak needs uh, and the difficulty in forecasting tip hardware typical, typically uh, results in overbuying. Uh, deployments can take weeks or months to complete and an ongoing maintenance of the infrastructure management is a hard problem for them. They also say that they're often quite caught up in surprise when new projects or groups of employees come online and they need to purchase or upgrade their hardware. The complexity of management also adds to, uh, to the issue where employees spend a lot of the time managing the software they need to get the job done. As a result of this, IT spends a lot of time and expense uh, implementing accessibility and security solutions and often uh, are told there are still big gaps. Uh, as mentioned, uh, bring your own devices uh, is a strategy that uh, it should include security and support risks uh, that are often uh, not acceptable or too expensive for IT. Uh, and there are also security risks associated where you're mingling your personal and your corporate applications on the device with access to protected networks and critical corporate data. IT users and uh, admins uh, struggle uh, to get the right software installed and keep everything up to date. Uh, they also want to ensure and control security, ensure security and control. Uh, IT teams typically implement a patchwork of technology using uh, multi-factor authentication, VPNs, and single sign-ons. Uh, but even with these tools, data leakage is still a problem since data is often stored locally on the employee devices and these devices tend to quote unquote, walk out the front door every night. Um, and still the end users say that they uh, often have a difficult uh, time accessing and sharing work contents in a way that meets security and access control requirements. Lastly, for the end user, uh, the existing solutions just undercut the very productivity that they're trying to enable. Employees have to jump through hoops to try to get and or to try to connect to the network and then establish a VPN, uh, especially if they're trying to do it over the phone or um, at a hotel. They often involve uh, custom browsers and email applications, which are incredibly slow and hard to use, and they don't uh, work the way people use their phones today. Tapping on a link in an email should return a web page, not a 404. Uh, in addition, employees have to agree to the terms that allow IT to wipe their phones, track browsing activity, et cetera, if they want to be able to access using their personal devices. So how do we solve this tension? Business today needs uh, to work from anywhere on work workers' favorite devices. They need to get instant access to applications, teams, uh, data teams need to get work done, and they need to foster a collaborative and innovative work environment that enables fast decision making. But IT needs to ensure that the data is secure uh, and protected and maintain fine grained control over the uh, who has access to what data. They need to find a way to reduce the complexity and the cost, and they need to enable that user productivity. So um, 
workspace, uh, AWS workspace is designed to uh, transform the desktop uh, and it solves many of the real world problems that IT users are, are seeing today. The first is access to a com company's resources. Uh, AWS's end uh, user computing services are available in 13 regions around the world. This helps IT deploy these company applications and resources closer to your workforce, uh, wherever they live, and give those uh, give those uh, a fast, uh, responsive experience. Uh, users can access these services from their favorite devices, such as a PC, Mac, uh, iOS, Chromebook, even Fire tablet and or Android tablets. Uh, or even a web browser, such as Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, et cetera. Um, you need to be able to scale with changing workforce. Uh, with AWS end user computing, IT, use, IT teams uh, can easily onboard workers, including partners, suppliers, contractors, and temps to meet the challenging business needs. IT quickly adds and removes capacity and can rapidly provision powerful graphics capabilities to ensure teams have all the tools they need to get work done. For example, workspace customers can uh, enable self-service provisioning that lets users manage and change the configuration of their workforce without the intervention of IT. Add to that a secondary product called uh, AppStream allows uh, admins to configure auto scaling groups, which instantly add and remove streaming instances as needed. So workspaces services also come with extensible APIs, SDKs, and programmable uh, access to the uh, various services. Just turn on existing software, turning your existing software into a SaaS offering without having to rewrite your application. Uh, and when customers uh, deploy end user computing services on AWS, they can store the data and applications in a secure manner in AWS or, on, or in their on-premise data centers. Uh, if they use products such as Worklink or um, VPN or, or DirectLink. Uh, customers use fine drain, uh, can, can use fine grain controls, including integrations with common SAML uh, compatible uh, identity providers uh, and Active Directory in order to manage uh, who has access to applications, data, and content. Customers can use these tools uh, to manage uh, access for both their company employees, as well as their partners, suppliers, contractors, and even their temps to ensure that their teams have access to the applications they need to do while uh, to do their work while keeping the data secure. Uh, with workspaces, you can enable multi-factor authentication uh, for an increased level of security. Uh, and AWS's end user computing services uh, displays uh, are encrypted, uh, ephemeral representation of the application and contents of the user's local device. By letting you restrict that company data from being stored on your workers' devices, you can better protect sensitive data. Customers also use uh, AWS Workspaces services to meet regulatory and compliance requirements, uh, including HIPAA, PCI, GDPR, FedRAMP, et cetera. Uh, increase your user productivity. Uh, customers can let you users access applications, data, and content from anywhere, anytime uh, using their favorite devices. Users can also continue to get work done as they move. They can start working on a powerful uh, cloud desktop, then switch to a secure mobile access while they're on the road, and then access desktop apps via browser, all while storing the data in a secure environment. You can select from a wide range of, issue of uh, compute, memory, and storage configurations to ensure your users uh, uh, have the most uh, hardware that they need, including graphics and graphics pro options, which have dedicated, which are dedicated and since powered by high performing uh, NVIDIA GPUs. Um, you can also provision windows and desktop uh, environments. Uh, and then you can stream applications using AppStream where customers can select from six different streaming instances 
and 20, from 20 different uh, families of instances to meet their specific use cases, including general purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized, graphic design, graphic pro, and even graphic desktop families. And of course, all this is done uh, via a fully managed service by AWS for cloud desktops and application streaming, which secure mobile access and cloud storage that eliminates the need for complex on-prem BDI infrastructure, device management apps, or disconnected storage. Customers can integrate with their existing tools for authentication, as we mentioned, security and encryption. So onboarding and and day-to-day -day management of these services is fast and easy and leverages familiar tools. Customer can man automate management process at an API level uh, for integration into common services such as ServiceNow, self-service, or DevOps tools such as Chef or Puppet. Workspaces handles all the heavy lifting of managing user uh, device hardware at scale. Workspaces uh, is able to leverage and take advantage of AWS's global infrastructure. And uh, it's built on top of solutions that are already solving many of uh, the hard problems, such as EC2, EBS, uh, Direct Connect. And these solutions have uh, many of the characteristics that you would see uh, in the global ECU uh, infrastructure. As a customer takes advantage of the scale, whether or not to connect one workspace or several thousand or one office or many offices in the world. Uh, uh, there you go. Uh, customers using workspaces in all sorts of ways, uh, but the common, uh, the few common ways that customers usually get started is by modernizing their organization. Uh, in which as part of this modernization effort, uh, customers are using workspaces to replace their legacy VDIs. They say the benefit is more cost-effective, flexible, and scalable manner. Uh, Project-based work where many of the customers get started uh, is because they need a fast and easy to onboard new users and scale up and down uh, quickly based on those needs in addition to simple integration to their existing IT environment. Uh, and they're also uh, used to solve uh, a number of com compliance and security challenges. Workspace also enables you to deliver a high quality desktop experience to your end users, as well as help uh, meet compliance and security requirements as mentioned. Uh, for instance, the data is not sent or stored to the end user devices. Your data remains within the AWS cloud or on-prem uh, it integrates with uh, AWS uh, key management service uh, to provide you with the ability to encrypt and store the, uh, encrypt the storage volume of workspaces at rest and in snapshots using KMS uh, customer master key. Uh, the PC over IP uh, remote desktop protocol used by workspaces provides the familiar desktop experience while keeping all the data encrypted while it's in transit. And lastly, as we mentioned, uh, Workspace is also HIPAA eligible with a BAA and a PCI uh, DSS-1 compliancy. Uh, and as covered, it plays well with uh, other existing tools that you have already, Microsoft AD, uh, Radius Server, uh, Certificate Authority, et cetera. So looking at pricing, pricing is based on, uh, on where you're at, uh, where you want to deploy your services and in what region uh, and also in um, uh, what, what configuration you want. Um, as far as billing, you have the choice of purchasing either on a monthly basis or an hourly basis. Uh, use cases for a monthly billing would be for, say, full-time staff. Uh, if you want to simplify your AWS bill with a uh, fixed flat cost, uh, get instant access and, or running scheduled events. Uh, looking at the hourly bill rate, uh, this is best for part-time employees where your, their number of hours may vary from week to week or even day to day. 
uh, you're trying to optimize your AWS bill and only use what you uh, actually or only bill what you're actually using, uh, you still get pretty quick access, and this works well for running any sort of ad hoc uh, tasks. As mentioned with the pricing, uh, AWS provides six different bundles for you to choose from. Um, free tier, standard, performance, power, and graphics. And again, this is uh, also varies based on the region that you're in. Um, They do support a bring your own uh, license version uh, of Windows 7 or Windows 10, which will save you uh, about $4 a month. This pricing here is displayed for the North Virginia region. Uh, additional things to note is that all bundles uh, do include the free tier uh, as part of the utilities software bundle. Uh, Internet Explorer, Firefox, and uh, 7-Zip is included. Uh, all bundles also include access to Amazon WorkDoc and 50 gigs of storage uh, at no extra charge. Uh, all bundles uh, offer either Windows 7 or Windows 10 experience. Uh, backend is powered by Windows Server 2008 R2 uh, and Windows 2016, respectively. Uh, AWS customers never have to deploy workspace or who have never deployed workspace is eligible for the workspace free tier. Uh, hourly billing consists of an hourly charge rate uh, while your AWS workspaces are running and the monthly fee is a fixed infrastructure cost. With hourly billing uh, workspaces that are not being used automatically stop after a specific period of inactivity and hourly, char hourly charges are uh, suspended. Uh, additionally, uh, the application bundles uh, offer Microsoft uh, Professional 2016. Okay, earlier mentioned the global footprint, uh, AWS uh, end user compute services are available in 13 AWS regions around the world. This helps to ensure IT can deploy company applications and resources close to the, their workers uh, where, wherever they live in the world and give them uh, the opportunity to work in a fast, uh, responsive experience. Users can access these services with their favorite devices, including uh, PCs, Macs, uh, iOS, Chromebooks, uh, and tablets, or just a web browser. Okay, as mentioned, WorkDocs is included when you use workspaces. Uh, so WorkDoc is a secure, easy to use cloud storage service that lets you store content, files, and documents across uh, teams and collaborate on projects. Uh, workspace is uh, a secure content store where you own and control your own files. You can specify which region uh, to store your user files to help maintain data locality requirements. WorkDoc runs, uh, again, on AWS's global cloud infrastructure. It's built to satisfy the requirements of the most secure sen security sensitive customers. WorkDoc is HIPAA compliant, uh, PCI compliant, and it does meet ISO compliance requirements. And in addition, uh, files on WorkDoc are encrypted both at rest and in transit. Uh, you can manage and access to your existing IT, uh, such as uh, an Active Directory, to take advantage of security groups, single sign-on, MFAs, and track your users and their file activity in near real time. Uh, users can use WorkDocs web client, uh, mobile application, WorkDoc Drive, or third-party application that are OLAF or OAuth. Uh, 2.0 compliant to manage your files and WorkDoc integrates easily with workspaces and app streams so your content is available from any environment on any device anywhere. Lastly, WorkDoc comes with an extensible SDK to help you customize your collaboration and management capabilities with your solution and application. You can use administrative API actions um, to integrate with WorkDocs with your existing solutions to perform 
things such as auditing, antivirus, e-discovery, and data loss prevention. Use, using user API uh, actions, third-party applications can programmatically manage files for you, commenting, notifications, and sharing. And lastly, the SDK is part of the AWS SDK and integrates in with other AWS services, allowing you to easily take advantage of the power of AWS for security monitoring, business logic, uh, analytics, storage, uh, artificial intelligence, and app development, uh, et cetera. Ways uh, you can use WorkDoc. Um, so, uh, yeah, customers like uh, gateway engineers uh, are retired. Uh, customers like like Gateway Engineers and Signet Maritime Corporation uh, are retiring their legacy on-prem uh, file shares and allowing users to access them anywhere. Uh, they say it's a vast improvement for them um, in order to store their content, um, but it replaces your your on-prem uh, and moves it into the cloud. So lastly, a uh, quick slide, uh, bringing back the uh, content of workspaces uh, and work docs when you purchase the, uh, when you purchase uh, workspaces, um, you can upgrade for additional storage if you need. Um, and work, work docs drive does become the default user storage solution. And lastly, we kind of touched on this as well was the uh, Microsoft licensing, uh, because this is a Windows environment. Um, currently, you are able to bring in your, uh, your on-prem software and your licensing. Uh, however, you need to have purchased this before uh, August 1st. Uh, after October 1, for any of your BYOL customers, we'll need to uh, have the VDA E3 or E5 uh, license per user uh, in order to be compliant with Microsoft's new publicly stated terms. Um, alternatively, you can buy the license uh, from Workspace itself uh, and license it through AWS. All right, and that is it for me. Uh, any questions at this time? I'm not seeing anything in the queue just yet. All right, at this time, we are going to end the event just a little bit early. We will be sending a review and a um, survey for you, just to kind of get an idea of what you guys thought. If you guys have any questions in the meantime, please feel free to respond to the email with the review and the recording of the video. And thank you again for joining AWS Solutions for your remote workforce. Oh, real quick before we uh, end, we did have a question about the experience with responsiveness uh, of workspaces. Uh, it's fairly quick. Uh, for he, we are here in uh, San Diego. Uh, we typically provision for Oregon, and the speed uh, and the responsiveness is is very good. Um, so it's it's typical with, with what your normal VDI experience would be, assuming you were uh, coming into your local data center, like typically an LA data center, if working out of uh, San Diego. All righty. That's it then. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys.
think you need to end the meeting somehow.